going to be looking at IGCSC biology, specifically command terms. Now, command terms are something we see in every single exam, and I've seen so many students slip up because they just don't know what these command terms mean. And it's not explicitly taught, and it's not explicitly like part of the syllabus, so I can, I can see why it trips people up. But trust me, they're actually very easy. And in this video, I want to go through this past paper, and I selected it. And you can see the past paper over here if you'd like to find them. I'm going to post it in the description anyways after the, at the end of the video so you can see it in the description. But uh, this is the paper. And I chose this because I thought it had a good range and a good few examples of different command terms that we can talk about. And these command terms are all very simple. And I'm going to explain them as easily as I can. So let's get right into it. So I'm going to be skimming through the paper and only choosing questions which are relevant to this video. But um, yeah, you can complete all the questions uh, by yourself as well. So for question one, we're only going to talk about B because A is just naming stuff. I'm sure we all know what name means in this case. It just wants us to name the structures. So we just give their name. Nothing else needed. I'm sure we can all understand that. But B, I thought was interesting. See, it seems very simple. We often look at this one mark and say, see, give, and we get excited. We think that this is a free mark and we know it, right? Uh, give an structure to show in the diagram. Oh, th that's not an animal cell. So we know the vacuole is not there, so this one. And we also know the cell wall isn't there. So, okay, okay, what if I write vacuole? Wrong. See, this is wrong. And this is the reason many people mess up. What is it actually asking us for? It's asking us to give the letter. Give the letter. I gave the name. And even though I'm technically correct, it's still wrong. There's no point of being correct if you're not following the question, and that's my point. Make sure you read the question when it tells you to give something. It's asking you to give the letter, so give the letter. What letter is that? We have A and C, A or C, so we can do A slash C. Okay? Just a simple question like that. We nearly tripped up because we didn't read the question, so make sure you see give the letter. Okay? When we see give, don't get overexcited. Make sure you read the question fully. Okay, next up we have the most frequent one that messes people up, which is explain. Why is explain confusing? I don't know. Many people struggle to know when to what depth they have to explain it, and if they have to just state something, and how to phrase, construct their answer. And the main reason people are confused is because of the marks. So explain can be four marks, three marks, two marks. I I've seen many more to explain, but people find it difficult to construct their answer when there isn't like a uh, solidified value for the marks for these types of questions. But I'll just give you the general structure to answer explain once. We'll do some more as well. I'm pretty sure there's more later on in the paper. So explain. Explain why some plant cells contain many chloroplasts, some plant cells contain few chloroplasts, and some plant cells contain no chloroplasts. So when we see this, what we need to just think quickly. We just think the first thing in our head, uh, of different plant cells and which which contain many chloroplasts, few chloroplasts, and no chloroplasts. Once we identify these plant cells, we can then work on the explanation after. See, this is the first part. In order to to build up to an explanation, we need to start simple. Use simplicity, then build up to complexity. So initially, let's just think of uh, a plant cell type that has many chloroplasts. Well, we know that the palisade mesophyll. Those, that layer of cells, that cell col uh, column-like uh, cell, contains many chloroplasts, okay? Now, few chloroplasts, well, that can be, that can be many, many cells, but I have a good example, which is the spongy mesophyll, right? It still has chloroplasts, yeah, but few, few chloroplasts. It's in the leaf, so it has chloroplasts. It's in, inside of the leaf, but it has few. But then... Where do we have no chloroplasts? Well, there's a couple of examples. Upper epidermis. You might not have thought of that one. That one's a bit hard to think about. But the easy one is root cells. Root hair cells, maybe uh, root cells, root hair cells, whatever. Root cells, okay? None. Okay, we've gotten these three things, okay? That is, that is our, uh, basically our foundation layer. We know these cells contain many, few, none. Now, how are we going to build an explanation? Why does the palisade mesophyll contain many? Okay, well, but the role of this palisade mesophyll cell is to uh, conduct photosynthesis. It's uh, the cell is in the in the area area of the leaf. It's positioned in the leaf, and 
the shape of the cell in the column-like stacks is made to maximize the amount of chloroplasts that can, uh, can be inside the cell. So the function of this cell is to kind of photosynthesis, hence it has many chloroplasts. The spongy mesophyll layer, on the other hand, has is not column stacked. It has many spaces, right? Because a lot of gases are diffusing through this layer. So we, of course, there's fewer, but we can say there is still some because it is just under. It's just on, like next to the under the palisade mesophyll layer. So of course, it's still going to need to have some chloroplast in case there is some uh, to maximize the photosynthesis. However, it won't have nearly as many as the palisade mesophyll layer. That's simply not its function. And next up, we have upper epidermis and root cells. Well, root cells is pretty self-explanatory, and for upper epidermis, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory as well. For root cells, they're in the ground. Root cells have no exposure to light, so there's no point of being chloroplasts. Why? What is the function of chloroplasts, right? To conduct photosynthesis. Simple terms to conduct photosynthesis. So, if there's an environment where it can conduct photosynthesis, there's no point of having these cells, right? And um, what is the environment where it can't conduct photosynthesis? No sunlight. Sorry, I'm stuttering, but having to speak quite fast. Well, in the environment where it can't conduct photosynthesis is when there's no sunlight, right? So, this is just a simple way we think of our ideas. And actually, in doing this, I've actually went through every single marking point in the mark scheme. These three layers and these two ideas. Simple, right? Very, very simple. But we just need to make sure we're giving the explanation. Why does this have many? Why does this have a few? Why does this have none? Well, here there's no sunlight. Here, these two are exposed to sunlight. This more than this. And the function of this is uh, this type of cell is for photosynthesis. Column stacked. Has many chloroplasts inside. Um, compact. Many, many words we can throw into here to explain why why this is happening. Next up we have name. Name again, pretty simple. We're just gonna have to name a um, term. In this case is just saying uh, what happens at ribosomes, translation, protein synthesis, whatever. We know how to answer name questions. Okay, multiple choice, we know how to do that. This is a table. They are coming up pretty frequently now actually from what I've seen. Um, now, tables aren't out to really trick you. They're pretty simple, but you just have to follow follow the example, right? Even like, I think the example is even more helpful than the uh, actual question that it gives you because you can just see what kind of what kind of function it's giving here. So lipid, it gives the function a store of energy, okay? And vitamin D, well, what what we can think of many things here, right? can think of strengthening bones, teeth, um, calcium absorption, and it even allows you to say preventing rickets. Yeah, I mean, that is a function. It's not being very specific here, right? With how general the, it is for lipid, store of energy, of course we can be, um, we, we, we can say many things here in for vitamin D. Same goes for iron, hemo, hemoglobin, you can say component of hemoglobin, red blood cells, erythrocytes, whatever you want to say. And fiber, many things as well, peristalsis, moving food, preventing constipation. We have many things to say, so yeah, um, I wouldn't worry too much about tables. Uh, as long as you know your content, it'll be pretty good. Next up, we have calculate. Now, calculation questions often trip up students. This video is not about calculation questions, so I won't go through it. Um, but yeah, calculate just means exactly what it says. Really simple. You just gotta calculate whatever it's asking you for, and make sure after calculate is uh, the most important part of the question because it tells you how many fifteen-year-olds. That's what you're calculating, right? The number n how is not how many fifteen-year-olds can have the recommended daily allowance of protein supplemented, right? Sometimes it tells you for certain units, keep an eye out for that. Just make sure after calculate you're looking out for things that's trying to trip you up on. And here is the one of the main reasons why I chose this paper, right here. Discuss. The thing that many students find is a nightmare. Because what do we write about and discuss, right? Um, a lot of people aren't taught it, it's often confusing, but trust me, discuss isn't as bad as we think. So what does discuss mean? Well. In this IGCC biology, a discuss basically wants us to make reference to advantages and disadvantages, right? 
Now, usually they give us some sort of data or they give us a conclusion or something, and then we have to discuss some advantages and disadvantages. So let's look at what, our, what we're given. The student concludes that his results show that GM salmon are useful in providing a um, balanced diet. Okay, it's an interesting conclusion. Now, they have given us data to, to help us uh, come to our answer. So let's take a look at the data. So we have the type of salmon and we have, so this is the mass of a salmon and the GM salmon and their length. And we can see their mass is higher for the GM salmon and the length is longer for the GM salmon. Okay, interesting. Now, um, what else does it tell us? It tells us nothing else, okay? It tells us something here about protein, right? A normal salmon contains 20% protein, okay? It is recommended that a 15-year-old needs 50 grams of protein per day for a balanced diet. So now we have all this information. We know that it makes the salmon bigger. We know that the length is longer. And we know a normal salmon contains 20% protein. Now what can we uh, say about this conclusion? Balance uh, use a balanced diet, right? The only reference here in a balanced diet is that we know a 50 year old person needs 50 grams of protein per day. So that will probably have to be referenced somewhere in our answer. So, with all the information we have, let's go right into it. What do we see in terms of just stating what we see? So the first part of the discuss is usually when they give you data, right? You just want to list a piece of data out. Right? Discuss requires you to make use of data very often in IGCC biology. So we're going to have to make reference to this data. Right? Sometimes it has to be numerical. You have to say the specific difference. But in this case, we're allowed to be general. We can say GM salmon grows more uh, than non-GM. Right? And then in your, when you're writing this, I'm just writing to simplify, but you, have to, you can make reference to how it's heavier and longer. Okay, so what does this mean? How does this uh, help us uh, answer our question? How to d discuss the conclusion, right? Because we're not talking about uh, their growth, we're talking about balanced diet. Well, what is the component that salmon provides? Pa salmon provides protein, right? So uh, by pure logic, we can deduce that more salmon equals more protein, right? So more protein provided, okay? So that should suggest that um, it's probably better, right? But wait, it's asking for a balanced diet. Right? So we just said salmon provides that. We've given our evidence from here. We've said, um, we've made like, uh, we've connected our, our evidence to the question by saying it provides more protein, right? We're talking about diets. And now we're going to have to critique this, okay? Why is more protein provided not, maybe not such a good thing, right? Why? Well, it tells us right here. It tells us that a 50 year old person only needs 50 grams of protein per day. It's clear that then that there's a limit to protein, right? However, people only need the required amount, right? 50 grams for 15 year olds, right? So you don't need more than the required amount. So maybe the GM salmon isn't as helpful as we think, okay? Now, that's our one critique point, but we've used all the data we have, right? And we need six marks. Keep that in mind, six marks. We've used the data we have. So now it's clear that we need to think of other other reasons why this, um, this GM salmon al alone uh, may not be useful in a balanced diet. We've thought about our, our benefits here, right? This is our strength. Can we see any other strengths with the information we have? We only have this table. I don't see any more strengths and neither can you because there aren't any more. This is the only strength we have and we've written about it. So now we're looking for disadvantages. So what other problems are there with this conclusion? Well, when he says balanced diet, a balanced diet also needs other food, uh, other nutrition groups. So we need, we need vitamins, we need car uh, carbohydrates, we need carbs, we need lipids, we need minerals, fiber, okay? Um, so we don't have any idea about the other vitamins, carbs, the other nutritional content of the salmon. We only know about the protein. So his results don't actually show this. Remember, his conclusion was derived from his results. We're discussing whether his conclusion 
is supported by his results. It doesn't matter if you think that salmon is helpful in providing a balanced diet. It matters is by what this uh, student has researched is does this support the conclusion that salmon's helping in, hel helping in a balanced diet? And he's only he's only looked into protein. He hasn't even gotten anything quantitative about protein. He's only seen his increase in mass and length and has made some sort of reference to protein. Okay, so we don't know anything about the nutritional content. So how can we say anything about a balanced diet? Okay, so now that was always the more critical thinking discussion points. Now I'm going to give you some discussion points that are often uh, often seen in IGCSE biology that is seen in many many questions is, that are similar to this. When especially when it's giving you uh, some sort of study and then you have to talk about conclusion, right? These are things that often appear. Okay, first thing we need to look at how many types of the organism was used. We can see that only one type of salmon was used, right? It doesn't uh, say the specific um, genus or whatever, but it's it's only one salmon is actually used. He's not doing an average, he just measures the mass of one normal salmon and one GM salmon. Can this be representative of every GM salmon and every salmon? No, it's only one. What if that one salmon was extra small and what if that GM salmon was extra big? That's what you have to be thinking about. So only one uh, one trial, right? It's only one trial that's not repeated. And we know in scientific method we need to be having repeats, right? And because of this, our, this data isn't reliable. So his conclusion is immediately invalidated even if you think it sounds logically. His data isn't reliable because he only has it in one trial. Now, what else is an issue? This is another uh, one that is quite specific to this thing, but we don't actually have any other information about what he was feeding the salmon. W was it controlled? What if the GM salmon got more food than the normal salmon and that's why it grew larger? We don't know if variables controlled. So I'm gonna write like this, are variables controlled? This is something you have to think about in every one, uh, every discussed question you think about. Are variables controlled? You have to think specific. In this case, we don't know what the salmon have been eating, so we don't know if the variables controlled uh, salmon consumption. We don't know what they've been. What, we don't know what they've been eating, so that's another issue. And um, finally, uh, another point we have to talk about is how, when they say in providing a balanced diet, it is unclear to what. Uh, age group the balanced diet is referring to. As we've seen here, a uh, 15 year old needs 50 grams of protein per day. So having an uh, increased protein above 50 grams will be redundant. But maybe for a 25 year old who often goes to the gym, right, has high activity levels, maybe the more extra protein will be more beneficial. It will be more be beneficial. So in that case, the um, GM salmon will be much more helpful than it would be for the 15 year old. So it depends on age, right? We can't have this conclusion generalized to an entire population. We need to be more specific, so that is another problem. And there we go. We've gotten more than six marks with these, actually, and it's very simple ideas. We just have to start simple, make sure talk about the data, talk about as many positives as you can, and then the negatives. And I'll tell you something. In these discussed questions, more times than not, you'll see way more negatives than positives and it's, it's actually very often that you see that and why is that well the negatives require you to use more critical thinking the positives are usually just something that you see just on face value but um it's not always the case um, of course you might see times where there's many positives many negatives but there's just something i've noticed from doing a lot of past papers that i often see many many negatives and not many positives and it, uh, it requires a lot more thinking to uh, get um all six marks for the negatives so yeah there we go. Part D is very simple. It's just to fill in the gaps. I'm sure we all can do that. Um, this is another explain that's four marks. I wanted to talk about this one, a four marker explain. We don't see that one uh, very often. It's uh, quite a rare species, but we have this one. And it's talking about why energy in the mudworms is not transferred to the organisms that eat them. So for that, we're gonna have to look back at question three. So let's look, take a look. Well. We can see mudworms over here, um, and mudworms, okay, they're eaten by the sandpiper, the ghost crab, sure. And it's asking us why energy in the mudworms is not all transferred to the organisms. 
that eat them. Okay. So this is talking about wood worms and it's talking about the food web, but it's actually a general question. It only actually wants us to talk about this specific piece of content in, in the syllabus, which is why energy is, isn't fully transferred across the, the, the food web, why only 10% is uh, transferred per trophic level, right? It's a pretty simple part, and I'm sure you all remember this, but basically, when it says explain here and form marks, what I have to say, the energy isn't fully transferred due to, uh, due to I'm going to have to explain the reasons, right? So explaining here is pretty simple. The first explanation is that energy is used up during respiration or movement, right? Okay, energy, energy is ingested. Okay, remember ingested is to do with feces. Don't get this confused with excreted. You can't excrete feces, but you can ingest feces. What you excrete is the waste products of metabolism. You excrete urine, and yeah, so. Uh, excretion so energy extract energy is ingested energy is excreted okay and this is another part that's very important the not all the energy in one worms is not all transferred well because not all of the mud worm is eaten so some energy is taken by decomposers right just simple stuff simple stuff right and another reason is just death right some mud worms just die without being, without being consumed. Okay, this one is actually very easy to explain, and I just wanted to show you this one because it shows how explain can be kind of confusing, but also very simple. And that's why I recommend, on top of the explain, you look at the nature of the question as well as the marks, right? Because that helps you just plan out what kind of, um, what kind of response you kind of want to do. So there we go. And this is another one. Uh, explain how sandpiper um, sandpiper has evolved to have long beaks, right? It's, it's an explain, but just like the other one, it's just a simple content piece. It's just talking about um, it's essentially talking about uh, survival of fittest, natural selection, and um, essentially it wants us to say that there was a mutative, there was a mutation, right? Uh, variation. There was a there was variation between between these the species and a mutation happen and then the mutation happened for a longer beak longer beak mutation and this gave them a competitive advantage why well the longer beak meant they could get more food whether that's worms or grass caterpillars whatever these birds eat and they can uh, reach deeper for these these food and if they have more food well they have a competitive advantage that means they survive longer and hence they reproduce more passing down their alleles right they pass on their alleles simple 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 explain here um sometimes scares people it's it's easy it's just a content piece that uh, they use they use this example but it's just a simple uh, part of your syllabus you should already know this if you studied enough it's it's very easy so yeah okay we see another explain and um, this one uh, is the explain that I wanted to talk about this is the explain that is in my opinion representative of why many people mess up on explains okay these explains are easy it's just asking you to just uh, basically recite something from memory essentially okay maybe you're applying it to the question but in my opinion those are bad questions you're just reciting something from memory essentially this one is where people can get confused explain what happens to the level of sucrose solution in the glass tube well let's look at what ha let's look at this okay so we have uh, the glass tube the sucrose solution and water and we have a partially permeable membrane so water's outside and um, the sucrose solution is inside okay so if we know the answer to this right we should know that the level of sucrose solution should increase okay and um, why does it increase right we can just say water enters through the partially permeable membrane but this doesn't answer the question and this is where the command term comes in this answer would be good for state what happens to the level of sucrose or 
suggest what happens to the level of sucrose when it just wants us to give the actual thing that happens, but explain wants us to ex give an explanation, right? So it doesn't only want an explanation. It doesn't only want what happens. It wants what happens and the explanation for why that happens. So you told them what happens, but why does this happen? Well, sucrose has a lower water potential than water, right? Sucrose has a lower water potential, right? Because the sucrose solution has a lot of solute. So now the water moves from high water potential to lower po uh, low water potential down the water potential gradient, right? And because of that, it moves from the dilute, uh, well, in this case, I can say dilute, but it's just water. So dilute water into the concentrated uh, sucrose solution. There we go. Uh, that's basically what I mean when I say explain. This is the classic explain question where you have to state what you see and then you talk about the explanation. Okay, describe. Um, describe is just giving suggestions essentially in this case. Describe is often pretty, pretty self explanatory and it usually is just you, what you think is usually the answer. So, how this apparatus could be modified to measure the rate of, rate of osmosis at different temperatures? Well, different temperatures, we can use water baths, Bunsen burners, maybe. Okay, then um, we can use a ruler, ruler to the mark of the tube, so we can see how much the tube increases, right? Maybe you can use some sort of measurement, uh, um, mass balance, uh, a, a ruler would be the easiest. Finally, a stopwatch, right? We have to measure the time. It wants us to describe how to do it and describe how the apparatus could be modified. It's not it, we can't just say take uh, we can't just say take the time, right? Because we're not describing how the apparatus could be modified. By saying the apparatus could be modified, it, we need to introduce new apparatus. The key uh, term is apparatus here. So our things are going to uh, our different additions are going to be apparatus, but we're going to have to explain. Um, how they're used. So, uh, not, not explained, but we're just going to have to make sure they're relevant. So, we're going to use water baths to vary temperature, use a ruler to measure the uh, sucrose solution increase, and use a stopwatch to measure the time so we can get the rate. Okay, and I am pretty sure um, for the rest of it, uh, if I remember, it's just calculation. Suggests, uh, suggest, uh, in this case, I remember this one. Suggest is actually just a suggestion. Um, I know it sounds uh, pretty <laughs> redundant, but it, it is it is exactly what it says. Um, it just get you giving a reason to why the rate of oxygen um, is higher at 22 degrees Celsius than 12 degrees Celsius, right? It is very simple. I mean, in a question even like this, even without me seeing the the other parts, right? What, why would the rate of oxygen absorption be greater at 22 degrees than than 12 degrees? Well what process takes in oxygen? Respiration. So more respiration due to more activity of the enzymes, more kinetic energy, collisions per unit time, more enzyme structure com complexes, so many things to say and, and this is only two marks. So yeah, and for the rest of it um, this was actually uh, pretty simple and yeah so that was the um, that was the paper. Um, I just went through the variety of questions in this paper that I can see there are duplicates. I think there's another discuss in this paper. There's many more uh, explained. So uh, if you would like me to exp uh, go through those ones as well, I can go through them. But I wanted to just give you an idea on some of the most common, um, the most common command terms and how you can go about them. And the rest of the command terms, in my opinion, are really self-explanatory. And I'm sure you, as strong IGCSE students, you're able to do them yourself. But I'm always here, right? Um, I have my mock exams pretty soon, so I'm also studying, but um, nonetheless, I'm sure you guys can do well in your mocks. Uh, please let me know if you need any other help. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to release a video, but I can just help you privately if you just message me. But yeah, I uh, hope this video has helped.